Hello and welcome to another uh, pungent episode of Obsessed with Guitars. Hmm. This time I'm going to be talking about secret guitar pickups. Yes, guitar pickups that you can't tell are there. Now, I have done a lot of these two-way switches before with push push pots. Now generally what that is is a guitar like, uh, as you can see, this Van Halen-ish kind of thing here. It's actually a kind of a copy of Eddie's 79 Van Halen uh, Frankenstrat. Uh, I don't know why I said a uh, copy of Eddie's Van Halen Frank. Of course, it's, a, it's not a copy of Robin Trower's Frankenstrat. It's kind of how he had it in 79 when he had a rosewood fingerboard back onto it, uh, and he had these three pickups in there, and he only had the one volume knob, uh, or well, it says tone on it, of course. It's Eddie. And I just, I prefer to have the functionality of a multiple pickup guitar, but I also want it to look like Eddie's, so I don't want to have a switch there. Well, what I did, of course, was I took a push-push pot and wired it up as a two-way switch. You see the neck pickup there. That neck pickup is actually wired in. The middle one is just there for show, but you can switch between the bridge and the neck pickup and get those tones. But the problem comes in when you have something like this. Now, this is a guitar that I just built because um, I'm starting to do these maze patterns on these guitars you can see here, and like that, and like that. Um, Otherwise, this is a copy of Eddie's 78 Frankenstrat. So, I've already flashed on the screen where I'm going to start playing and stop talking. Uh, but here, I'll just flash it again on the screen for you, because I know some of you absolutely hate the sound of my voice for some reason. Uh, but let me talk about this guitar a little bit and what this is, where it's the same as Eddie's guitar and where it's quite different from Eddie's guitar. Uh, the first most obvious thing would be the paint job. I did this uh, maze pattern. Yes, it's an actual solvable maze. You can go from the circle here to the circle there, uh, and there is a path for getting through. Um, I tried to do the paint kind of imperfectly like Eddie would have done. Uh, so, you know, there's no sanding between layers, and, you know, and the paint on the headstock is a, you know, you can see it's a little, I did some wear on it and it's a little running on it just to make sure it's like, oh, you know, like if Eddie had just finished it before he had to do a show. Um, trying to capture the spirit of that. Uh, so where this is the same as Eddie's 78 Frankenstrat. Well, it's a solid ash body. It's not that light. It's, it's not horrible. It is certainly tolerable and a standard Strat trim, as you can see here, but it is a steel block in the back. I just, you know, because you're going to see it from the back a lot, I didn't want to have too much gold color or a color that wasn't chrome or silver or something like that. Uh, you do have the brass nut on here, like Eddie's, but that's it. That's all that's non-colored, you know, like a, like silver or anything like that. So, the other place where it's the same, a uh, little tone knob here. Got it, of course, you know, it has to say tone on it uh, instead of volume. I also made a copy of his studded strap with the chain on it because I thought that would be really, really cool. Um, it also has, uh, you know, the standard Strat football jack here on the front. It has two springs in the back just like Eddie had it. And I also have on the back here a no bozos um, uh, bridge or plate for the neck. This is good. I like those that he had in the 80s. I love that Nobozo shirt. And I always thought that's cool. You, know, you can do the ones that have the, uh, the the plate that has the actual serial number stamped into it, like Eddie's was, was it 6172, something like that. Um, you know, and I have one of those for a more accurate Frankenstrat that I'm going to build. Uh, but I just thought that the Nobozos thing would be really cool. Um, this is the pick guard I carved out. This is uh, started life as just a big black sheet. I regard making pick guards as a punishment. It is unpleasant, it is smelly, and especially doing it like how he does it, where you use the soldering iron in strategic places to kind of melt the edges a little bit. It is not fun to make a pick guard, and uh, I have to make another one because somebody ordered a Frankenstrat from me, a 78 Frankenstrat, so I have to make another one, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, so that's the, basically the body. Oh, yeah, well, I'll mention the, the pickup that you can see anyway. Uh, that is a DiMarzio Tone Zone, and I just love how that thing sounds. Great, great pickup. Uh, and, oh, I should mention the body I did not carve, although I am carving a body right now for a customer. I've carved more before, of course. Uh, this was from Supertone. Uh, they are veteran-owned and a really cool company. I've bought blanks from them. I've bought bodies from them. 
and they are amazing price. You got to do a little work on the bodies uh, to get them. You know, you got to do some sanding and some shaping around the neck area, but uh, but just just fantastic, fantastic price for an American-made solid quality body. Now the neck. This was from actually a, a Telecaster Deluxe, a Squire Tele Deluxe, uh, and as you can see. This is, you know, one of the CVS heads. So it started life as a standard Fender CVS head, but I was like, no, I want this to look, I want this to at least be the right shape. So I went in with a, I made a template for the Lynn Ellsworth headstock shape um, from a scan I found on the internet and had to carve it out of uh, MDF and then reshape this headstock. So this is the proper Lynn Ellsworth headstock. Now where this neck differs from Eddie's neck, um, Obviously, it's not bird's eye maple. Um, the nut width here, it's not one and three quarters inch. This is the standard 1.65 that Fender does. Uh, it has the truss rod adjust up here at the, at the headstock end, which honestly I like better than the Lynn Ellsworth neck. I don't like having to adjust truss rods by removing the neck first. It's kind of an annoying process. I prefer headstock adjust, but it's not totally accurate to Eddie's guitar, which is why I mentioned it, of course. Uh, also, this is still hard finished, although you can see there's a little chip out right there from the finish. Um, and I was going to patch it up, but I'm like, you know, it's supposed to look a little bit worn anyway. You can see that I had a, you know, again, on the headstock there, you know, put some little worn places there, you know, like, oh, would you be scratching it, you know, by putting strings in or scratching with your finger or something like that. And same on the back, like, you know, if you're reaching around to do the locks, you know, would you be scuffing it up? Of course you would. Um, I will be making a more accurate, I got a, here a bird's eye blank, um, which is really cool. I love bird's eye maple, which I'll be making a really visually accurate Lynn Ellsworth neck with no headstock truss rod adjust. It won't have a truss rod adjust to the headstock because it's going to have this. This is beryllium copper. I'm going to make a neck with a beryllium copper non-adjustable rod. This thing is heavy and well, I mean, it's not as heavy as steel would be, which is why I got it. It's half the weight of steel, but actually stiffer. Uh, anyway, back to this neck. Also, staggered locking tuners on it with no string tree. Uh, another place where it differs from Eddie's. Uh, and the, the fretboard, it's a 10-inch radius. So Eddie's would have been a 12. And these frets are nice and tall. I, I love how these frets feel. I love the frets... The reason I'm going for these Squire necks as opposed to like American necks, not only are they less expensive, but they tend to have a nice 10 inch radius, or nine and a half, and reasonably tall frets. And the fret work is great on these. Like I didn't have to do any leveling on this. Uh, of course, it was a used. It wasn't a brand new. You know, um, like just from the factory neck where you would have to do some leveling and stuff. Obviously, this neck came off a guitar that was already had already been used and already had a good uh, leveling, which of course keeps the cost down. You know, when I sell this guitar, I don't have to add in cost of me having leveled the guitar. Um, this neck is, you know, reasonably thin. It feels really nice. And I did take, I took 2000 grit sandpaper, which is like just above regular paper. I mean, 2000 grit is really fine stuff and went over the back of this neck to give it more of a satiny kind of feel without removing the finish. I didn't want to remove the finish of the back of the neck. I want to protect this neck. Um, I, I like hard finishes, although I'll be doing some tongue oil on some necks, especially ones that I have reinforcement, like carbon fiber reinforcement or uh, the beryllium copper reinforcement. Ones I don't think are going to twist, I'll do tongue oil on the back of them. Uh, but this one doesn't have any of that, and I didn't feel like... Uh, routing in anything else because it's not a two-piece neck. I can't just steam off the fingerboard uh, and just and put in some reinforcement rods. So I don't want to do any of that. I want to leave it hard finished. Uh, now, on to the secret pickup. The pickup that is in the neck position here underneath of this pick guard. So this is, of course, a push-push two-way switch for going back and forth between the two pickups. Now I mentioned that this is a DiMarzio Tone Zone. Uh, the one that is in the neck position here, I'm actually going to have to flash up the name of the winder. It's a, a guy I, I bought on Reverb. Um, I'm going to flash it right here on the screen because I can't remember what it was. I even looked it up earlier like, oh, I'm going to shoot this later uh, to make sure that I remember. Uh, and I totally forgot to look it up again because uh, I'd forgotten. So what I did was, it's a 
relatively low wind. It's uh, about 7.8K, about 8K around there. Uh, so kind of a low PAF kind of wind, but I put in an Alnico 9 magnet. I needed something that's going to reach up through this pick guard and be strong enough to grab these strings. The other thing I did was, you notice on the back here, when I showed you the, uh, the plate back here, that I painted this silver. Well, that's because I actually shaved down the butt of the neck about a sixteenth of an inch to bring it down a little bit closer so the strings will be a little bit closer to that pick guard. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that those strings are as close to that neck pickup underneath of this pick guard as is physically possible. Um, there's not, you know, a, a lot that you can do when there's when the pick when the pickup is under the pick guard. Um, because it's where it is, you know, you can't adjust it higher. And it's direct mounted to the body, just like this pickup here. Uh, the bridge pickup is direct mounted to the body. Now this is a short leg pickup, uh, this DiMarzio is. So I had to put in a little uh, walnut spacer down there in the body. And speaking of which, look, this is no knock against Supertone. I love the bodies. But I think that their CNC routes the back cavity here a little bit too deep, like probably about a sixteenth of an inch too deep, because when I put in the bridge screws to hold the bridge in, they started poking through the back of the guitar. Uh, so what I did was I shaved down a very thin piece of walnut, um, you know, maybe maybe it's a sixteenth of an inch thick, and, and glued it in the back here and painted over it so that you would never be able to tell you know that there's anything other than just a piece of wood back here. But that actually is a, a little walnut piece that's in the back here covering up uh, where the screws poked through because I'm like, oh, I want it to look nice, you know, I, I want it to, again, I want the relicking to look intentional, you know, the places on this body, they're going to get worn, this is a very thin finish, and it's going to wear uh, in a natural way, but I don't want to, you know, have it look ugly with screws poking through the wrong way, so, a little piece of maple there, uh, or a little piece of walnut there, so the pickup that is under here a low one, and that's really what you want, you know, so you see like the uh, uh, Brad Paisley uh, secret agent pickup was kind of where I got this idea. That is a ceramic magnet, very strong ceramic magnet, but a relatively low one because Brad Paisley wanted to have his Esquire look with a pick guard uh, that doesn't have a neck pickup in it, but still be able to get neck pickup tones. Now, I actually, well, you'll hear this in just a second, and I'm going I'm to talk about magnet strength because you know when some people think well maybe you want really hot pickup under there maybe like maybe put a Duncan JB uh, well what you want is you want to make something that is not going to be super dark because again the further away that you get from the uh, the strings the more that those low frequencies are going to start to disappear and you're going to be left with the high frequencies and you want to make sure that it's going to have a good sound to it as it reaches up through this this pick guard. So it's got to have a really strong magnet and relatively low wind. Um, now this Alnico 9 I think just does the job. So here let's take a listen to what it sounds like. This is the bridge pickup. <laughs> So there, a perfectly fine bridge pickup sound. Now, here is the neck pickup. This is coming from underneath of this neck right here, or underneath this pick guard. So, you can hear that it's not as saturated. I mean, again, that pickup is having to reach a long way uh, from just underneath this pick guard, and I made sure that it was mounted so that it was just touching the pick guard. Um, I actually, in retrospect, I think that I'm gonna go with like really ridiculously strong magnets, like neodymium magnets. And you can get neodymium magnets for guitar humbuckers. Um, they are pretty much the strongest that you can get. Normally, you don't want to go that powerful in a guitar pickup. You only want to use those for like bass pickups. Uh, but, again, that pickup has to reach a long way through. So, I originally had a, uh, a, a pickup that had like an Alnico 5 in here, and it just, you could barely hear it coming through the neck 
uh, the neck position. So the fact that this works at all is pretty amazing. But you know, th what's cool is you can actually go back and forth between the two, and you could do stuff like, you know. <laughs> get a copyright strike, so I'm not going to play much more than that, or any more than that. <laughs> but, you know, the fact that you can kind of go from a, a softer sound to a harder sound without having to precisely control your volume knob. So the, the neck pickup adds versatility to this, because I love the 78 Frankenstrat. I, I love the cool, you know, beat up weird pick guard that Eddie has on there. Um, you know, and, and I, I love the 82 as well, the, you know, where it's red, black, and white, it has the Floyd and the uh, you know, the squared off telly heel neck and all that kind of stuff. But I prefer this and I really just wanted to have a guitar or make a guitar that was more versatile for somebody. Maybe they're having to do later Van Halen stuff like they want to do the solo from right now, which, you know, Eddie at that point had a two pickup guitar and he was able to do two pickup stuff, you know, with his Ernie Ball. Um, I, I just, I think that it's worth doing to give your guitar a little more versatility unless you are a super die hard you know I can only have it this way I can only have uh, one pickup uh, and that's how Eddie did it and that's the way that I'm gonna do it too and if you want to do it that way hey that's more power to you but I think that this kind of thing adds a little more versatility and uh, to your otherwise one trick pony kind of guitar and uh, now one thing that I would love to be able to do is do some sort of concentric pot that would allow me to control tone or do a three-way push-push switch so I could actually get in between tones and get both pickups on at the same time. Uh, but I don't have the desire or wherewithal or time to create my own potentiometers. If you do and you've or you've done it and you know how to do it really easily, let me know in the comments. I'd actually love to be able to make that uh, a possibility for people. Do a three-way push-pull, push-push pot, that kind of thing. Um, so that's that's that. I mean, he, so this guitar is going to be for sale on Reverb soon. It's going to be the first of many Maze guitars that I'm putting up for sale. Um, this one is more of a tribute to Eddie's ingenuity of making stuff work, and you know, it's intentionally like I didn't put a clear coat on this. Uh, I wanted it to be like something Eddie would have made. I want it to be a little bit rough around the edges, but still perfectly functional. You know, so it's got the staggered locking tuners and the brass nut that I put 3 and one oil in, although I just literally strung this up not long before I went on camera. I haven't done a stretching routine on the strings at all or anything like that. And of course the standard Strat tram uh, with the vintage bent steel saddles. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear from you. Have you done any under pick, uh, under pick guard pickups at all? Uh, has anybody done one where it's just all the pickups are underneath the pick guard, so it doesn't look like it has any pickups at all. You know, any sort of neat stuff. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, you know, is this the kind of thing that you like to see as well? And uh, let me know. Let me know what you what you like to do with your concepts of different weird kinds of guitars. Uh, I'll be posting this up to Reverb. Uh, and matter of fact, uh, this guitar is going to be for sale too. That's going to go up on eBay. Um, and I'm just going to be building a lot more guitars. And you can see I went ahead and broke out the the templates for various different things, make some explorers as well. Uh, I got all sorts of necks sitting around. This one from Coastal Customs. It's a nice flame maple neck. So you'll see all these various uh, pieces and parts in guitars coming soon. Just got a Swamp Ash um, big blank from Kime Lumber, uh, who is my favorite supplier of lumber. That's where I got that bird's eye neck. They have, aren't paying me to say this, but if you are looking for blanks uh, of anything, of neck, body, uh, fingerboard, and you're looking for reasonable prices, oh my gosh, just go to Kime Lumber. Their prices are unreal. So that's it for now, and I'll see you guys next time on Obsessed with Guitars.